Hello, my name is Albert, Installation Success Engineers from Watches. In this video, we're going to show you how to install Watches Auditor 6 on a single phase property for grid, load, and solar monitoring purposes. To conduct this installation, you'll need at least one Auditor 6 and one set of three CTs. Auditor 6 can be connected to up to 6 CTs, which means it can monitor up to 6 AC circuits. Auditor 6 is available in cellular or Wi-Fi variants. In this video, we're installing the cellular version. Let's see what's inside the box. First, a quick start guide with a QR code that directs you to the Express Setup portal. The auditor itself and a terminal block for the CTs connected to the bottom of the auditors. Don't miss out the serial number stickers on the lid of the box. On the lower compartment, a male SMA stubby 4G antenna. You may want to attach this later as it is easier to attach after the auditor has been mounted on the DIN rail. Single pace power supply tails with one side bare wires and the other side already terminated to the green plug. You'll also get a white and blue cable to convert it for multi-phase application as needed. In the serial box, you'll have the CT to monitor the circuit. So here's the CTs. They are bi-directional, split-core CTs, secured with a clip. When clamping the CTs to the conductor, make sure you hear the clicking noise when closing the CTs to make sure it is secured. And when the current is flowing in the same direction as the arrows edge on the CTs, it will show you positive readings. The pink cable is the positive signal and the white is common wire. Again, pink is the positive signal and white is the common wire. Auditor 6 needs to be installed by a licensed electrician. It needs at least two poles or 35 mil of space. Auditor needs a dedicated circuit breaker or RCBO with a maximum rating of 10 amps. Make sure the auditor is installed inside a switchboard so that it is not exposed to water, rainfall, or direct sunlight. To minimize the chance of getting the CTs mixer, take time to number both ends of the CTs with Sharpies, and even better if you can number the CTs itself. Do this for the rest of the CTs that you are going to use in the installation. Before we begin, reminder that it needs licensed electrician to commission the auditor, and as always, safety first. So start by switching all of the breakers and the main supply switch before removing the cover of the switchboard. When clamping the CTs, remember CTs are bidirectional and must be installed in the correct direction. Pay attention to the arrow edge on the sides of the CTs. The arrow needs to point away from the energy source and towards the load. So, for grid CTs, assuming that the grid incoming supply is connected to the top of the breaker, the arrow needs to point away from the grid. Solar CTs, assuming that the inverter is connected to the bottom of the breaker, the arrow needs to point away from the solar inverter. Load CTs, Assuming that the loads are connected to the bottom of the breaker, the arrow need to point towards the load. Your clamp CTs should look like the following. The grid CTs, the arrow is pointing away from the grid, the energy source. Load CTs, the arrow is pointing towards the load. And solar CTs, the arrow is pointing away from the inverter.
When connecting the CTs to the green terminal plug, a reminder that the channels are configured from right to left. On the far right, we have channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, and then the common terminal for channel 1, 2, and 3, channel 4, channel 5, channel 6, and the common terminal for channel 4, 5, and 6. The numbering is from right to left. When connecting the CTs to the terminal block, you may want to grab the neutral of CT1, CT2, and CT3 together and connect them to common terminal. This will help secure the CTs and make it easier to connect the pin cables to the relevant terminal. Your CTs connection should look like the following. Repeat the same process for another set of CTs as required. After connecting all of the CTs, plug the power supply of the auditor. The auditor needs to be connected to a breaker or RCBO with a maximum rating of 10 amps or less. Please make sure that you follow the regulations in your area. As this is a single phase property, we can use the supply power supply tail without any modifications. Before closing the switchboard, do a pull test to make sure that every connection has been terminated properly. Now we can close the switchboard, attach the antenna, and energize the auditor. In some circumstances, the antenna may prevent the cover of the switchboard to be closed properly. If that's the case, try to adjust the angle or the orientations of the antenna. In this example, it works best when the antenna is pointed sideways. Don't forget to indicate the breaker that supply power to the auditors and attach the serial number sticker of the auditor. Now we are ready to configure the auditor on the Express setup. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.